The Hamming code is an efficient encoding scheme that we use to transmit binary messages while protecting against corruption of the transmission. The Hamming code is particularly great because it will tell us not only that an error occurred, but also where it occurred. Assuming, of course, only one bit was corrupted or flipped. In this video, we will discuss one example of the Hamming code, the 74 Hamming code. The 74 Hamming code encodes a 4 bit message using only 3 Barity bits for a total of 7 bits. These bits are arranged using a special layout plan so that when we perform a series of calculations, we can quickly and easily determine where an error occurred. Parity bit 1 is in position 1 and serves as an even parity bit for these positions. We use the XOR function, the odd even detector circuit, to determine the value of parity bit 1 based on 3 bits from the message that we are transmitting. Parity bit 2 is in position 2 and serves as an even parity bit for these positions. We again use the XOR function to determine the value of parity bit 2. Finally, parity bit 4 is in position 4 and serves as an even parity bit for these positions. And we use the XOR function to determine the value of parity bit 4. You might be wondering at this point, why can't he count, or why 1, 2, 4, not 1, 2, 3? What's with the odd arrangement of these bits? Well, the arrangement has everything to do with how we construct and interpret 3-bit unsigned binary numbers as having a value between 0 and 7. We interpret the subscripts of the parity bits as the positional weights of a binary number. Notice that the positions used to calculate parity bit 1 are all odd numbers that have a 1 in the 1's place of the binary representation. We represent this connection by placing all four bits inside one circle of our Venn diagram. Similarly, the positions used to calculate parity bit 2 all have a 1 in the 2's place. We can place all four of these bits inside one circle of our Venn diagram. Since the message bit in positions 3 and 7 have a 1 in the 1's place and 2's place, they lie in the intersection between the circles for parity bits 1 and 2. Finally, the positions associated with parity bit 4 all have a 1 in the 4's place. Place these bits in the last Venn diagram circle. The message bit in position 5 has a 1 in the 1 and 4's place, and it lies at the intersection of the circles for parity bits 1 and 4. Similarly, the message bit in position 7, which has a 1 in the 1s, 2s, and 4s places, lies at the intersections of all three circles for parity bits 1, 2, and 4. Because the bits are laid out according to a positionally weighted binary code, we can check the parity of all four bits in each circle of the Venn diagram using the XOR function to find out where an error occurred. If we lay out our check bits as a positionally weighted binary code, we can identify whether an error occurred and exactly where it has occurred. Say for example we want to send the binary message 6. We could then set our parity bits to maintain even parity for each set of four bits. If we calculate our check bits, we should find that no error has occurred. Indeed, we find that all three check bits equal zero, therefore there is no error in the original message. Let's suppose that parity bit 2 gets flipped during transmission. Let's see what happens to our check bits. If 
we interpret the value of our check bits as the binary representation for the number 2, we find that the position, bit in position 2 was flipped.